Hey guys, how's it going? So this is kind of the, the like the last video that I've been waiting to make. It's integrating Spark with SQL and that is really cool. And you're going to see how cool it is here in a second. Like you truly, it feels like you just write SQL straight into Python seamlessly. Yes, there's a Spark API and yes, you would have to convert to a pandas data frame, but like under the hood, like on top of everything, it really feels just like so seamless. So let's just get started. Um, you can see that I have Spark SQL. In the beginning, I'm gonna read the CSV files in to an actual Spark data frame just so that I have the data read in. But the cool thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this airline. So this is the API, the, the data frame airlines API. This, again, some data. And I can do create or replace temp view airlines. What this is gonna do is this is going to create like a, like a, a theoretical view, like a SQL table. So it's converting the airlines data frame to a SQL table for us to use in this session. Now, if you want to use it beyond this session, you can do create or replace global temp view, and that will actually, you know, work in your other workspaces. For now, I just want to create two tables, airlines and flights, to show you the functionality. So instantly, I even wrote, this is neat. You can see I wrote SQL inside of a Spark distributed cluster on a SQL table, and now it's a Spark data frame. So like, let's say I had a table from the get-go. I could simply select from airlines, spark.sql, no connector, no nothing crazy, and I just do airlines.count, and I could do show five, and you can see that instantly I have these numbers, and these are now Python usable objects. Like these are, these are Python variables. Again, super simple SQL statement, like who uses that? Not many people, but like if I did a count, right, I could have done the whole count rather than converting to Python or not. I could just do the count within SQL, Boom, I collect on it, and remember, this is gonna return me a data frame, so I actually have to grab the zero with row and the zero with column, print, print flights number. I know that I now have 500,000 flights numbers, so I went SQL, boom, it's instantly a Python variable. I can now use it throughout the rest of my script. Maybe I wanna like use it in machine learning for whatever instance. Here's the neat part is, uh, if you have a team, much like we have a team at, my, at Uplift, you will have people that are pros at SQL and some pros that are Python and some people that are great at Spark or Scala or like whatever, right? And this platform kind of makes it seamless so like everybody can write as much code as they want from their language and still give it or make it readable to another. So notice this spark.sql, I'm really selecting from a table right? Like I'm, I'm selecting what it feels like a SQL table and instantly I'm applying a Spark transformation, right? So now it feels like I'm writing Python. I'm aggregating a distance and a sum and then I rename it total distance. And if you show, I have the total distance. Someone might be like, you know, so like uh, someone from data engineering or, or data analytics might be like, hey, I just write that all in SQL. Like no problem. That's the coolest part is you're like, I want to get all delays. Notice right here, I wrote all of it in SQL which is cool, right? So I could really pare down my data frame with SQL and show it. And then instantly, as I pared down my data frame, this guy, uh, sorry, as I pared down my SQL table, it is now a data frame for me to consume. So I can instantly use, do like, you know, scikit-learn, I mean, scikit-learn wouldn't be good here, but like um, Spark ML Lib, right? And I could instantly do machine learning on this data. It's literally like straight from SQL to machine learning. It's awesome. Again, here's a couple different things. Again, I started with some SQL, then I went to Spark API, and then I did the order by in Spark, for example, and then I got a data frame. Um, I could do same thing here. Oh, now what I wanted to do as like a demo for you guys was I had airlines and an average departure delay. So you'll notice that's what this query is doing. But again, I don't have any information about the airline, so let's join it. Well, I kind of showed you in the last video, we can join with Spark with Spark itself, or we can join with the Spark SQL command like we would in SQL and then pull it out as a data frame, which is really neat. So again, I register the delay, um, I, I register the delay per airline, which is this guy as a table, right? So first I have to basically like make it a temp view, right? Like a SQL table. And now it can be used within the query parameters here. So now I can do join airlines on airlines.code delay per airlines.airline. .airline. So these are this is me matching on a unique ID, order by departure delay descending, and boom, I instantly have a table, which is now a data frame for me to consume. And here's a neat part, right? I could do delay airline and then two pandas. 
and let's just go df. So like I really, I wanna get out of Spark at this point and just go straight into pandas. And boom, now I have a pandas data frame to consume. Like if I only wanna use the, the easiest form of XGBoost because my data is not that big. Spark MLlib has XGBoost as well, but let's not get into that. We're just like, hey, let's just use the easiest version. So like we literally went from SQL to Spark to Python, you know, flat and pandas, like all in the course of like a couple minute video. Like it's super awesome. Anyways, guys, I appreciate your time. I hope you have a good day. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye-bye.